Good morning, and welcome to the Agenda Ocean Conference. I'm your moderator, Parag Khanna, and we have a very exciting day ahead planned for all of you. But before we get to the first session, it is my great pleasure to welcome to the stage Gretchen Goodbody Gringley and Andrew Smith of Ocean Tech. Good morning. Nice to see you. Good morning. Okay, good morning. My name is uh, Andy Smith, and I'm an environmental entrepreneur and documentary filmmaker. And I'm absolutely head over heels in love with our planet's most precious and fundamental of all natural resources. It is, of course, the world's oceans. I've spent the last 15 years traveling the world, filming wildlife on land and deep under the ocean. And I've been lucky enough to witness some of Mother Nature's most awesome spectacles. It has on so many occasions brought tears to my eyes, tears of overwhelming awe, inspiration and wonder. When you dive under the ocean to film with humpback whales and you catch their eye, or you witness how perfectly formed and clearly intelligent the ocean's top predators are. A whole new world that often feels very detached from ours begins to open up. Whilst filming a recent project in Bermuda, I was setting up a sequence underwater to film some tiny reef fish. I was surrounded by stunning coral structures, beautiful creatures, and of course, Bermuda's pristine water. When we returned to the boat, a man called Chris Fluke an expert on Bermuda's marine ecosystem, began to explain that some of the tiny reef fish we were filming spawn at very specific spots on the reef. Chris went on to explain that these fertilized eggs then drift way offshore into deep water, where they develop into juveniles and find refuge in floating seaweed mats. The point, apparently, to all of this is for, so they avoid the predatory fish on the reef as they're growing up. The tiny juvenile fish mature in these seaweed mats, and once they're old enough, they will often swim hundreds, if not thousands of miles, back to the exact spot where they were fertilized to live out their lives. Returning to the same spot from a drifting seaweed raft is a miracle in its own right. But at what point did a seemingly unintelligent fish work out that by spawning at a specific time in a perfect westerly current, that their offspring would float out to sea where they would find a random seaweed raft to grow up in. How does the parent fish know that this is the best chance of its offspring's survival? And how on earth do the returning offspring know how to navigate the thousands of miles back to the same spot on the reef? And finally, how do they even know that returning to the same spot is essential? Impressive evolution is simply an understatement. The point to this story is to highlight just how intricately connected, intelligent, and most importantly, delicate the marine ecosystem is. These tiny ecosystems are crucial parts of wider ecosystems and food webs that ultimately form ocean processes so significant that they provide a vital life support system for all life on Earth, in all its variations, and especially for us. No matter how far from the shore we live, the oceans affect our lives, the lives of our families, friends, colleagues and classmates. The very air that we breathe, the water we drink, the food we eat and the products that keep us warm, safe, informed and entertained all can come from or are transported on the ocean. About half of the world's population lives within coastal zones and ocean-based businesses contribute more than 500 billion to the world's economy. Historically, we thought that we could never take too much out of the ocean. Only now are we starting to realize the impact of this catastrophic mistake. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, over 80% of fisheries now operate at or beyond sustainable limits, pushing many marine ecosystems to the point of collapse. Other research suggests that by 2070, the most recognized fish species will be wiped out altogether. Despite such shocking statistics, the oceans remain the primary source of protein for more than one billion people, a number that continues to grow. The social, economic and ecological risks associated with such unsustainable use are huge. We are now indeed risking the very ecosystems 
on which our own survival depends. So I've been lucky enough to have family in Bermuda for my entire life, and as children, we used to spend long, hot summer days fishing off the rocks. We would regularly bring home a nice grey snapper, or perhaps if we were lucky, a hogfish. And I can remember my uncle teaching me how to fill air fish while we were sitting on the dock. After removing the meat, we would simply throw the remains back in the ocean, and within seconds, a whole host of creatures would move in and consume the remains. You can do the same now, some 20 years later, in the same spot, and the remains will sit on the ocean floor for a week untouched. It's tangible, visible change. In 2014, my television production company, Gas Productions, received investment to write, create, and deliver a huge natural history TV series. Our goal was to film 12 episodes of stunning natural history television all about the marine life around the island of Bermuda. We'd heard of a man called Neil Burney, a local veterinarian who swam with huge predatory tiger sharks, so he seemed to be a good place to start. Fast forward six months and we'd written a very ambitious research project and TV series called Ocean Vet. The project focused on studying the local and long-range movements of 12 iconic marine species. Each project was filmed and crafted into a TV series that's now broadcasting all over the world. The project put myself and our team in front of our planet's most iconic marine species. It was by far the most amazing journey of our lives. Being in the water and having so much time with such magnificent animals gave us all such a unique and special perspective into their world. It was full of life-defining and life-affirming moments. My daughter, Leah, who's now 10, absolutely loves the water. And whenever we test new dive gear in our pool, she loves to be in the water with us. Six months ago, I thought maybe Leah would like to experience scuba diving. So while looking over at a fairly concerned wife, but a very excited daughter, I introduced Leah to the underwater world, a place where I have spent so much of my time. As a parent in these situations, you have a stream of images that enter your head. Daddy and daughter going scuba diving around the world, and images of your daughter's face as she experiences the wonders of the world beneath the waves. Safe to say when we surfaced, I was a little emotional, I knew that this experience had the potential to develop into a lifetime of incredible experiences for her, in the same way that my first underwater experience set me on a journey that's resulted in an incredible career. Moments like these are a stark reminder for me that it's up to us to leave our kids a world, and indeed an ocean, that provides them with the same opportunities and experiences that it's provided us. So we finished filming Ocean Vet and left Bermuda. Two weeks later, and having spent nearly three years working side by side with such an incredible team, our dear friend and legend Neil Burney, the front man of Ocean Vet, tragically lost his life in a freak free diving accident. Neil was helping a friend dive up some damaged lobster pots when he dove down and suffered a shallow water blackout and drowned. It was a horrible way to finish such an incredible journey but through this journey, Neil had shown us all how precious and how vulnerable much of the marine, marine ecosystem is. The physical interactions we had provided us with a unique window and an opportunity to witness firsthand what we all have to lose. Empowered by Neil and fueled by our experiences, we set out to design a new marine research project. One so ambitious, so advanced, so monumental, that it stands to revolutionize the way scientists study marine life all over the planet. The project is called Ocean Tech. What we have to do is to save ecosystems, the entire complex, fantastic, ungraspable, incomprehensible, marvelous accumulation of interlocking organisms, plants, fungi, animals, insects, mammals, birds, the lot. Wait a minute, here are the wolves changing the physical geography of the Yellowstone National Park. Here are the whales changing the composition of the atmosphere. About 12% of the land around the world is now protected. 
safeguarding biodiversity, providing a carbon sink, generating oxygen, protecting watersheds. But here's the problem. The bottom line is that most people don't realize that if the entire world doesn't come together to protect the ocean, then we run the risk of fundamentally breaking entire ecosystems. The ocean represents over 3.4 billion cubic kilometers of volume within which we've explored less than 5%. And I look at this, and I go, well, there are tools to go deeper, longer, and further. Submarines, ROVs, even scuba diving. I've spent about 3,000 hours underwater, and 500 hours of that was in submersibles. And I've learned that that, that, that deep ocean environment, and even the shallow oceans, are so uh, rich uh, with, uh, with amazing life that really is beyond, beyond our imagination. You know, nature's imagination is so, so boundless compared to our own. I wish you would use all means at your disposal to ignite public support for a global network of marine protected areas, hope spots, large enough to save and restore the ocean, the blue heart of the planet. So Ocean Tech is a collaborative marine research project and a huge global education program that's endorsed by the IUCN, the World Commission on Protected Areas, the Sargasso Sea Commission, National Geographic, and NOAA's Marine Mammal Sanctuary Program. The project is partnered with the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, the Bermuda Institute of Ocean Sciences, the Bermuda Underwater Exploration Institute, the Bermuda Zoological Society, the Plastic Oceans Foundation, and Sea Life Centers. Ocean Tech is a not-for-profit charitable organization, and our mission is to utilize the world's most advanced autonomous underwater vehicles to justify global marine protected areas, now internationally acknowledged as one of the ocean's last and best hopes for recovery. My name is Dr. Goodbody Gringley, and I'm the chief scientist for Ocean Tech. I'm an ocean adventurer and conservationist, seeking to understand how the oceans function in order to provide data-driven advice on how best to protect them. At the heart of the Ocean Tech project is an amazing autonomous underwater vehicle called Remus. Remus is designed and built by leading engineers at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in the USA. It's the world's most advanced underwater drone and it's capable of intelligently and autonomously following marine life. Its job is to unobtrusively record exactly how animals use the marine ecosystem so we can reveal the areas that need the most protection. First, on the nose cone of the Remus, there's a payload of six 4K cameras that are aligned to record in full 360 degree virtual reality. This provides the viewer with a unique 360 VR submariner's perspective of the vehicle's target. Under the vehicle are a number of environmental sensors that record salinity, temperature, pH, and current. And lastly, at the back of the vehicle is a side scan sonar system that maps the ocean floor, allowing us to synchronize the physical environment with animal behavior. For the first time in history, 17. we can now truly unobtrusively follow an endangered marine species to discover and protect the specific habitat that's crucial to its survival. Our first mission is in Bermuda, where we will provide the government with unique scientific data that will help them protect key habitat. Habitat that our scientists believe to be essential to the lives of marine species right across the Atlantic Ocean. 
by bringing together the latest cutting edge technology with leading female scientists across multiple global missions. I believe ocean tech far surpasses any ocean conservation efforts to date and will provide a once in a lifetime opportunity to help establish data led marine protection. Our partnership with the Sea Life Centers, the world's largest aquarium network, will result in interactive ocean tech exhibits launching in 15 cities and seven countries around the world. We will connect 9.1 million people in 2018 and 45.9 million people over five years with our unique educational virtual reality content and curriculum linked material. Our wish is to inspire generations to become better stewards of the ocean and to protect it and understand it and value it as the fundamental life support system that it is. We are passionate about utilizing the latest technologies and to test, develop and advance these technologies to help us better understand and protect the natural world now and in the future. So Ocean Tech provides some of the most powerful sponsorship and philanthropic opportunities of its kind. Powerful collaboration, unique experiences, extensive corporate social responsibility, environmental data sets, huge global branding and marketing opportunities, and of course the opportunity to be associated and partnered with a world-class, world-leading marine research project. Today was our opportunity to tell you our story and to hopefully inspire you, but it's also our opportunity to hand you an invitation. We want to invite you all to join us in Bermuda on one of our exclusive tiger shark research expeditions. You will witness our team studying massive 800 pound sharks as we utilize advanced satellite tracking technologies to study their migratory behaviors. This research drives our ability to better protect them. It truly is a once in a lifetime experience. The first 16 people who register right now on our website will each receive $650 in cash to go towards travel costs, 25% off selected Bermuda hotels, a completely free Tiger Shark research experience, and a business taster concierge package provided by the Bermuda Business Development Agency. As you all can see, we are serious about connecting you all with our mission. We look forward to you joining us, and thank you all very much for listening.